In our next example here, we want to find the length of something called a semi-cubical parabola. Uh, so the equation we're given is x squared equals y plus 1 cubed. So the parabolic part's coming from the x squared, and the semi-cubical is coming from the cube here on the y plus 1. So we're going to do it from the point 0, negative 1 to the point root 8, comma 1. So 0, negative 1 is down here on the graph, and th this is the graph here of x squared is y plus 1 cubed, and then root 8 comma 1. So if we go across from y equal 1 and come down, this is going to be root 8. So that is the point root 8 comma 1. So we want to find the length of that piece right there. So we could integrate, here's our arc length formula, we could integrate with respect to x. And so if we do that here, uh, we'd have to solve this for uh, y. So we've got uh, here, let's see, y plus 1 cubed is equal to x squared. And then we would take cube roots on both sides. So the cube root and the cube cancel each other out. We get uh, y plus 1 is x to the second power cubed root. So that's 2 thirds power. And then uh, bring the 1 over as a negative. So your y is going to be x to the 2 thirds minus 1. So then our f prime of x, which is y prime, uh, 2 thirds will come down in front times x. Uh, subtract 1 from your exponent, so negative 1 third, and then derivative of negative 1 is 0. So this is going to be 2 over 3 uh, x to the 1 third, or cube root of x. So that's our f prime. That's what goes in here. Uh, so this is going to be integral. Uh, a and b are going to be our x values. Uh, so 0, negative 1. So from x equals 0 to x equal root 8. So this will be 0 to root 8. And then square root 1 plus. And then our f prime gets squared. So this thing gets squared. So it's going to be 2 over 3 x to the 1 third. And that gets squared dx. So let's uh, simplify a little bit here. Whoops. So integral 0 to root 8. And then we've got square root 1 plus. Uh, square the 2, we get 4. Square the 3, we get 9. And square the x to the 1 third, power to a power, you multiply. 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds, so x to the 2 thirds, and dx. And uh, this integral, uh, that's fairly involved. Remember when you get these uh, fractional exponents that you want to get a common denominator here? Um, so, so this one is kind of messy here. So this is kind of messy. Let's see if there's another way to do this problem. We actually, since uh, we've got here we wrote uh, y as a function of x, we actually could solve this for x just by taking square roots and let x be a function of y. So if x is a function of y, x equals f of y, then our arc length equation, uh, this will be f prime of y dy. So this will be integral, we'll call it c to d, uh, square root 1 plus f prime of y dy. So that's arc length integrating with respect to y, which sometimes is easier. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So then our uh, x squared here is y plus 1 cubed. Uh, take square roots on both sides. 
So your x is going to be y plus 1 to the 3 halves power, third power square root. And that's your f of y. So then f prime of y, or x prime, since x is the function, y is the variable here. 3 halves will come down times y plus 1. Uh, decrease your exponent, so 1 half power. And then times the derivative of the inside, which is just 1. OK, so that's this part here. So we can keep going here. So this will be integral. And now we'll use the y values, negative 1 and 1. So integral of negative 1 to 1. Uh, adding up the little pieces of arc length, square root, 1 plus, and then our x prime squared. So this will be 3 halves uh, y plus 1, 1 half power. And that whole thing gets squared. dy. So let's see, what are we going to get here? Integral negative 1 to 1, square root, 1 plus, uh, square the 3 halves, we'll get 9 fourths. And then uh, power to a power here, square the y plus 1 to the 1 half, 2 times 1 half is 1, so 9 fourths times y plus 1. No fractional exponents in there. And actually, I didn't need that equal sign there. And that integral is going to be dy. So that's definitely easier. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So if we uh, multiply that 9 fourths in and then change that 1 to a 4 fourths, uh, we will be integrating negative 1 to 1 square root. Uh, 9 fourths times y, 9 fourths y. Uh, 9 fourths times 1 plus 9 fourths. And then we've got that plus 1, uh, which is 4 fourths. And dy. So all these have a common denominator. This is 9y plus 9 plus 4. Um, all over our common denominator of 4. So that's going to be integral negative 1 to 1. Uh, square root 9y plus 9 plus 4 is 13. And then all over 4 dy. And now you can take square to the top and bottom separately. Uh, so this will be integral negative 1 to 1. Um, square root 9y plus 13. And then uh, all over 2. Square root of 4 is 2. And that uh, 1 half can come on the outside. So this will be 1 half integral negative 1 to 1. Square root 9y plus 13. dy. Uh, let's see, forgot our dy here. So, and then this is just a use substitution, right? Uh, derivative of 9y plus 13 is just 9. So we can multiply by 9. So we got 9 dy, there's our du, and then compensate outside with a 1 ninth. So we want to let now u equal 9y plus 13. So our du is going to be 9 dy. So we've got that 1 18th out in front. And then integral. And then this will just be 9 dy is our du. And then here's our u, 9y plus 13. So that's square root of u, which is u to the 1 half power, right? So we've uh, got to change our limits of integration over also. So we take negative 1, plug it into our u substitution. So 9 times negative 1 is negative 9, uh, plus 13 is 4. Um, y equal 1 here, upper limit, plug in there. Uh, 9 plus 13, 22. 
So this will be 1 18th. And our derivative of u to the 1 half will be u to the 3 halves. And then dividing by 3 halves is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. And we're going to evaluate that from 4 to 22. Now the 2 thirds we can factor out of the evaluation by distributed property. So the 2 will cancel into the 18 and give a 9 times 3, 1 27th. And now just plug our 22 in for you. So 22 to the 3 halves minus, plug in our 4, 4 to the 3 halves. And there we have a numerical answer, exact numerical answer. So in this case, it was easier to uh, find the arc length by integrating with respect to y. And sometimes that will be the case. So if you get a really messy integral when you're integrating with respect to x, like we did here, then try integrating with respect to y. I'll just be using this formula here.